Hello, this is Seher from Easy Peasy, and the topic we are going to discuss today is called as bioenergetics. If we look at the word bioenergetics, bio means life, and energetics come from the word energy. So the definition of bioenergetic is that it will describe the transfer and utilization of energy in biological systems. Now the question is, what is energy? Energy means the capacity for doing work. Just like a car is going for miles on gas, or a mixer is running on electricity, so they are getting energy from these sources. Just like that, humans need energy to walk, to grow from toddler into an adult. The process of fertilization and fetal development also needs energy. And even when we are sleeping and not doing any work, our lungs are working and our heart is beating. So we are still using energy. So just like other machines, human beings also need energy. Now for planet Earth, the main source of energy is sunlight. And we are not asking our from seven deadly sins who can absorb energy directly from sunlight. Rather, the sunlight energy is absorbed by plants. With the help of carbon dioxide and water, it can convert this light energy into glucose. And this glucose will be utilized by us, either by eating those plants directly or by eating those animals that are eating those plants. So directly or indirectly, we are taking this glucose and will convert it in the form of ATP with the byproducts of water and carbon dioxide. This ATP is the energy source for our body to do every type of work. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Now this is the energy currency of human body. And the bonds that are connecting these phosphate groups have high energy in them. When these bonds get dissociated from each other, it will remove one inorganic phosphate and release free energy. Now the question is, what is free energy? Free energy is also called as Gibbs free energy and it can be defined as the amount of energy available to do work. It can also predict whether the process will be done or not. For example, if a person is moving down a hill, it will need less amount of energy. This type of process is called a spontaneous process. And if a person is lifting weight, it cannot do it without the help of instructor. Now it is taking energy from external source. So this type of process is called as non-spontaneous process. The equation of Gibbs free energy is delta G is equal to delta H minus T into delta S, in which delta G is Gibbs free energy Delta H is the change in enthalpy, T is the temperature, and Delta S is the change in entropy. Now, if you're a biologist, you might get confused with the terminology called as enthalpy and entropy. So let's define them first and then we will move forward. In order to understand these terms, we need to go back into the chemistry class. Well, in chemistry, if we are taking a conical flask in a box, that conical flask will be a system and the box will be called as the surrounding. Together, system plus surrounding will make universe. In the system, there are two things that can be exchanged from system to surrounding or from surrounding to system. The first thing is the mass or the work and the second thing is the heat. In order to understand it, let's take an example of a car running down the hill. Now in the first case, if this car is moving slowly down the hill and hit this tree, then it will cause a fender bender. In this case, the car is hitting brake constantly, so it will producing a lot of heat energy there. And then it will hit the tree slightly, that's why there is less damage there, so there will be a less work. If this person is not hitting brake and will hit the tree with full force, in that case, the car will use less heat, but it will do more work by breaking this tree or breaking the car. In both the situation, the amount of energy is the same. 
so the amount of energy is independent of the path weight is taking. That's why it is also called as state function. Now systems can be of three different types. One is called as open system, one is called as closed system, and the third one is isolated system. In an open system, both mass and heat can transfer from system to its surrounding. For example, a boiling pot of water. In this case, the water is evaporating, so the mass is transferring, plus the heat is releasing from the pot. The other system is the closed one. So if we put a lid on the top of this pot, then the mass will not transfer outside into the surrounding but the heat can still transfer from the system to its surrounding. So this type of system is called as closed system. The third type of system is called as isolated system, in which neither mass nor heat can transfer from system to its surrounding. For example, a coffee thermos, in which the least amount of heat can be transferred from system into the surrounding. There is no real life example of an isolated system. Now in all these three systems, the most amount of energy is present in the isolated system. So the total amount of energy present in the system is called as enthalpy. So in all these three examples, isolated systems have the highest enthalpy. Okay, let's talk about entropy now. Entropy is a measure of randomness or disorder in a system. So for example, if we are taking ice, the molecules present within ice are intact. They are vibrating, but they are not moving around. So the entropy of ice is low. Now, if this ice is converted into water, then these molecules will have more space and will move more randomly. Now, if this water is going to convert into vapors, then the molecules present in the gas state will have more area to cover. So the entropy in the gas state is higher as compared to liquid and solid. Okay, now we know what is enthalpy and what is entropy. Let's compare them to what will happen to the Gibbs free energy if one of the things will change itself. So if the total energy of a system will change or going down, now it is equal to Gibbs free energy, the Gibbs free energy will also be down. If the temperature of a system will be high, now it is in the minus situation. So if this value is a bigger one, then we will have a negative G value. So Gibbs free energy will go down. The same is the case with entropy. So if entropy is going up, the Gibbs free energy will go down. In order to summarize it, if the delta G value is greater than zero or in the positive state, then that type of process is endergonic reaction. It means that they're non-spontaneous reaction. They will need energy in order to produce their products. And if the delta G value is less than zero or in negative value, then those type of reactions are exergonic reactions. It means that they doesn't really need energy in order to make products. Okay, now let's understand this delta G value in photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, we need six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water. When they will react with each other, they will produce sugar and six molecules of oxygen. So I'm going to show this equation like this. So we have six molecules of carbon dioxide with six molecules of water, and then we are producing glucose with six molecules of oxygen. If we look at the screen right now, we can see that the entropy of the system is lowering itself into glucose. Like it is not that much random because glucose is a bigger molecule and it is more intact as compared to carbon dioxide and water on the reactant side. So in the equation, the entropy is less and the total energy of the product is higher because they are taking energy from sunlight. So the total enthalpy is greater for the system. So the Gibbs free energy will be higher or greater than zero. So the Gibbs free energy of photosynthesis is 686 kilocalories and it is in the positive state. So this type of reaction is endergonic reaction.
If we look this reaction in a graph, we can see that the reactants have less energy and the products have more energy. So the delta G will be higher than zero. Now, what is this slope here? This slope is basically the activation energy required to perform this function. And this activation energy is provided by sunlight here. Make sense? Okay, now let's talk about cellular respiration. Now, cellular respiration is the opposite of photosynthesis. So we will just change the arrow from products to reactants. Now, this is cellular respiration. Now, if we look at the entropy here, we can see that it was more intact in the reactant form and it is more disordered in the product form. So the total entropy of the system is higher. If we look at the enthalpy of this reaction, we can see that glucose is converted into carbon dioxide and water, and it is releasing energy in the form of ATP molecule. So the total enthalpy of the products are lower here. That's why the delta G value of cellular respiration is a negative value. So this type of reaction is exergonic reaction. Now, if we look at this reaction in the form of a graph, we can see that reactants have higher energy as compared to the products. And delta G value is less than zero here. So this type of reaction is exergonic reaction. If we look this thing in ATP molecule, the same thing applies here. Now here, adenosine triphosphate have high energy here. So when this ATP will convert into ADP, an inorganic phosphate, this type of process is called as exergonic reaction. But when this ADP will convert back into ATP, this reaction will need energy there. And that type of process is called as endergonic reaction. By these reactions and the transformation of energy from one product to the other, we can express ourselves like this and make our life beautiful. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe our channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.